One of my favorite duologies in gaming is the Sonic Adventure games. I grew up with both of these games, and I've lost count of how many times I've played them throughout the years. They're just that good. In fact, I love these games so much that I know them inside and out. I know what makes them great games, and I also know what makes them not so great games. Basically, I know a thing or two when it comes to both of these games. And since I'd like to say that I'm qualified to speak on this, I wanted to discuss the best part of both games being the speed stages. In case you live under a rock, the speed stages are the Sonic and Shadow stages of both games. It's the action-packed, fast-paced platformer stages that you'd typically go to a 3D Sonic game for. It's the main attraction of the adventure games, and it's almost universally seen as the best part of both games. So today, I will be ranking them from worst to best on a tier list. D tier means it's the worst, and S tier means it's the best. Pretty simple. Please note that I'm only talking about the speed stages specifically and no other playable characters, because if I did, we'd be here all day and I do not have time for that. So without further ado, make sure to subscribe with the bell, $5 channel members get access to videos two days early. Anyways, that's enough plugs. Let's begin with the D tier. Starting off the D tier, we have Green Hill Zone from Sonic Adventure 2. Now, don't get upset by this placement. While I may consider it the worst Sonic Adventure stage, by no means am I actually critiquing this level. Don't get me wrong, this stage is absolutely doo-doo dog water, but it's kind of an easter egg stage, so in reality, I don't really care about it that much. But if you do care to hear my thoughts on it for some reason, I will say that starting out, the camera is complete utter garbage in this stage. It is laughably bad. The level just looks out of place in a modern Sonic game, but again, I think that was kind of the point. And finally, it's just boring. Can't really say much else. It, it's a bad level. I mean, what else can I say? But I don't even think Sonic Team tried to make this a good level because it's an easter egg level. I mean, you're not gonna go all out on an easter egg, you know? For our last level in the D tier, we have Sky Deck from Sonic Adventure. Here's the thing. This level is not a complete utter dumpster fire. It has good aspects and it's fun to an extent. It just lacks the creativity that the other Sonic Adventure 1 levels have. Ideally, a good Sonic Adventure 1 level would be easy to complete, but with an extremely high skill ceiling with a ton of creative ways to move faster throughout the level. Sonic Adventure has something called momentum, and it's a very important mechanic to mastering this game. Through momentum and the use of the spin dash, Sonic can move faster throughout the levels and even spin dash off slopes to reach faster pathways or even outright skip parts of the level. That's what a good Sonic Adventure level does. But this stage doesn't really utilize that trait in its level design. There's not many slopes in this level, in fact it's pretty linear for Sonic Adventure standards and you just kinda jump and hold forward for most of the level. Until you reach the second and third half, which is a bit better than the beginning because there's more opportunities to use a spin dash, but again, not many slopes to interact with in this level. Also, another thing that is kind of annoying is that this level is very buggy. It, it breaks a lot. And some of that is due to the very abrasive scripted sequences placed in the level. I still, to this day, hate this section of the level where Sonic runs down these stairs in an automated sequence. It takes away all control from the player, and if you attempt to do something, you might break it. Overall, I just felt like this stage was very weak compared to the other Sonic Adventure levels, and I also felt like it just missed the mark on everything that makes those levels so good in the first place. But yeah, we're, we're done with the D tier, we're actually gonna go on to a little bit of better levels, so let's head into the C tier. Starting off the C tier, we have Casinopolis from Sonic Adventure. I think this stage is barely passable for the standards of level design in this game. Now, don't get me wrong, I really do enjoy the creative progression system this level has with giving Sonic the freedom to earn the required amount of rings in any way the player chooses. But to be 100% honest with you, I do not like the pinball minigames. They're fine if you're playing through the game normally because it's a nice change up in gameplay. I will always welcome new gimmicks like this one. But when you're replaying the level and trying to complete it as fast as possible, this just does not work well. Granted, if you don't earn enough rings from this main game, it sends you into a sewer where it becomes an actual level, but even that section is a bit too linear for my liking. And I feel like I need to clarify this now in the video. Linearity is not a bad thing. Hell, every level in Sonic Adventure 2 is linear. But when you give a linear level with not much to do in it, 
it becomes rather weak in its gameplay. Like, if you're gonna give me a linear stage, add some slopes or obstacles for me to react to. This level just throws a few spikes in a hallway and some enemies. Nothing too crazy. But even with that said, there is no jarring bugs or glitches with this level, and I like the atmosphere and the music. This level's pretty alright. Anyways, for our last level in the C tier, we have Windy Valley from Sonic Adventure. I have a feeling that some of you are not going to like this ranking, but hear me out. This level is not bad. It's a good level. But on the standard for what I expect out of a Sonic Adventure 1 level, it's a little flat. Like, just a little. My main issue with this level is that it is way too linear with not much to do. There's a lot of roads to run down, but you're not really doing anything crazy. There's not many skips to do either, it just exists for the sake of it. But I do have a theory as to why it's so linear. In case you guys don't know, there is a beta version of this stage that was much more open with more slopes and platforming. However, for whatever reason, it was replaced with this level before the release of Sonic Adventure. I believe that this was the last level created for the first Sonic Adventure, and to a further extent, was the first level where Sonic Team was experimenting with a fully linear based level design that would eventually be improved upon in Sonic Adventure 2. The reason why I say this is because I just put the pieces together. This is the only stage in Sonic Adventure that has a beta version, on top of the beta version being used in the reveal of Sonic Adventure, thus implying that the beta version wasn't replaced until the very last few months before release. The cherry on top is that it's oddly very linear compared to the rest of the levels in the game. Except that's just an assumption, maybe I'm completely wrong about this, but I've always seen this level as the prototype of the level design that we would eventually see in Sonic Adventure 2. However, at the end of the day, regardless of its origins, it's just an alright level that isn't bad, it's not great, it, it, it gets the job done, you know? Anyways, let's move on. Starting off the B tier, we have Final Chase from Sonic Adventure 2. This is the final shadow level, and it is a good level. Except for me, it just feels a bit... anticlimactic. For Sonic Story, you have Final Rush, which is this awesome, fast-paced level based around rail grinding mechanics and a ton of different pathways. Then you have Final Chase, which is spinning cylinders as its only gimmick, and it gets old a lot faster than rail grinding. If I'm being honest, there's nothing inherently wrong about this level, it's a perfectly fine level. But the only way I could properly describe my feelings is that it feels like a Sonic Adventure 2 level if it was AI generated. It feels like you fed a robot a bunch of Sonic Adventure 2 levels and told it to create a new one and this is what we got. There's nothing special, nothing challenging about it, nothing terrible about it. It feels like a level on autopilot. That's the best way I can explain my feelings about it. Next, we have White Forest from Sonic Adventure 2. Let's start off by saying that this stage's tone and atmosphere is great. It's awesome watching Shadow swing across the forest while carrying all of his momentum. The soundtrack is also a bop. However, I feel like this level just doesn't require much from the player. In contrast to the first Sonic Adventure, what makes a level good about Sonic Adventure 2 is the fact that it's very fast paced and you have to react to various punishing obstacles in a short amount of time. Of course, you're not expected to be able to react to every punishing part of the level on your first try, but that's what makes Sonic Adventure 2 so fun. You almost have to memorize these stages inside and out to know when to react to an obstacle and how to maximize your score so that you get an A rank. However, for this level, there's not much to master. There's not many obstacles in your way, and you don't even have to get that high of a score to get an A rank. A ranks come very easy to you in this stage. It's not bad, but again, it feels like another stage made on autopilot. Okay, for this next stage, we have Green Forest from Sonic Adventure 2. This is often a favorite by many, and I could see why. It has amazing tone and atmosphere, and it's incredibly memorable from a story perspective. This was the oh shit, the island is about to blow up moment that was so dang epic from the story. Also, I might add that visually, this stage looks beautiful. Remember, this game came out in 2001 for the Sega Dreamcast, and look at this stage. It's an insane amount of detail. Now that I think about it, there's no wonder why this game works so well as a GameCube game. Besides that though, this is another stage that doesn't really give Sonic much to react to. Not many obstacles, and again, a really easy A rank. It's not bad, it's not great, 
it's a good level. For our final stage in the B tier, we have Crazy Gadget from Sonic Adventure 2. Now, this is typically the most common choice for least favorite Sonic Adventure level, but personally, I don't think it's that bad. Sure, it's not as good as a lot of other Sonic Adventure levels, but it's still good. It's genuinely challenging to get an A rank in this level, and there's plenty of cool stuff you can do here. My only issues with this stage is the anti-gravity gimmick and the godforsaken lightning shield. I will get back to that in a moment. The anti-gravity is not terrible, but it does feel a bit awkward to control Sonic though. To put it simply, it does not feel good, but honestly, I've never played a game that has ever made anti-gravity feel good before. The only exception being Super Mario Galaxy 1 and 2, but that is the only exception. So I, I guess it's kind of expected that this gimmick would be kind of annoying. But you know what's worse? The lightning shield. Holy hell, I wish this shield never existed. Worst thing to ever happen to the Sonic franchise. Scratch that. Worst thing to ever happen in the universe. This shield can die for all I care. That, that's right, I have beef with this guy. In this level, please do yourself a favor and avoid checkpoints when you have over 120 rings. Because if you get a lightning shield, this stage is impossible to complete. You might as well just get hit, because once you have to use the light speed dash over death pits, that lightning shield is going to ruin your entire career. The amount of times I have died in this level because I got the lightning shield and I tried to light speed dash is ridiculous. I hate it. This shield sucks, I hate Sonic, and I hope Sega removes the lightning shield from every Sonic game that has ever appeared in because it's so bad in Sonic Adventure 2 that it gives me the quivers when I see it in another game. Crazy Gadget would have been better without it. It may have even reached A tier, but I just cannot be asked to deal with that shield. Starting off the A tier, we have Ice Cap from Sonic Adventure. It's not a perfect level, and I do feel like there are better levels within Sonic Adventure, except I like how this stage is structured from a spectacle sense. You start out in this beginning area of the stage where you get to spin dash around for a little bit and make a nice quick jump into the entrance of the mountain. That part is pretty cool. And then you enter the mountain and it's a dark cave with ominous music in the background. This section of the stage is very linear, however there's plenty of areas where you can use the spin dash to get a head start. Pretty decent part of the level. But finally it leads you into this snowboarding sequence which is one of my favorite Sonic set pieces of all time. I've talked about this specific section of the level so many times on my channel, so I think you guys already know that I like this level. Everything from the snowboarding sequence to the village in the background, the blimps in the sky, the contrast of colors, everything works into this level's favor. Very good level. Next up, we have Radical Highway from Sonic Adventure 2. This is the first shadow stage in the game, and personally, I believe it's a banger. Everything from setting to soundtrack to even the level design in some areas. Unlike the other shadow levels, I see myself somewhat exploring this level a bit more and choosing more advanced pathways. Like, I genuinely do make an effort to reach the higher pathways on the bridge section of the level and whatnot. That's not really something I can say about the previous shadow levels I ranked, because the other other levels didn't have much of an incentive for exploration in the first place. Overall, it's a really good level, and it's actually one of the only fully original Shadow stages that doesn't use assets from the Sonic stages. This feels like a Shadow the Hedgehog themed level. Side note, but I feel like they wanted to do more with Shadow, but they just couldn't because of whatever reason, maybe it's time constraints or budget, I, I don't know. Which makes me kind of sad because I would like to see more from Shadow in this game, but it is what it is. Alright, this one is going to be controversial. For our next stage, we have Pyramid Cave from Sonic Adventure 2. I, I know this is a fan favorite, but I have my reasons as to why it's an A tier. At its best, it's a 10 out of 10 perfect level that would easily be in the S tier. Unfortunately, this stage suffers from something that I like to call bullshit. Now before you say get good skill issue, the level itself isn't even hard. My problem is the walls. The Sonic Adventure games have some very bad collision issues when it comes to running up walls and whatnot. That's why the first Sonic Adventure typically tried to stay away from round hallways and running up walls. Those moments in the level design are few and far between, probably because the developers themselves knew the collision kinda sucked. But for some reason, the developers of Sonic Adventure 2 apparently loves round hallways. They're in the Green Force levels, this level, and all kinds of different scenarios. And when you're running down these round pathways, sometimes Sonic just 
loses control and bugs out. Now, I don't really care about Sonic bugging out on these sections, as long as there's a rail or something for Sonic to fall onto, right? But in the scenario of Pyramid Cave, the round walls are in multiple parts of the level and are crucial to mastering the level. There's been so many times where I've failed a run in this level, and it's not because I failed to react to something on time, no. It's because I tried to jump off the wall and Sonic decided to glitch out. I feel that's unfortunate because this level would be perfect without the poor collision that this game has. I love the idea of running through these hallways and jumping through hoops to get a high score. I love this section where you have to go get a key from these enemies that can actually hurt you. I love the time trial that the level gives you near the end. This is peak. This level is perfect when it works. So, I'm sorry that I'm not putting this level in S tier, but if the Sonic Adventure games were ever remade in the future and they fixed the god-awful collision issues, I, I think this level would be an easy 10 out of 10. But for now, it's going to be staying in the A tier. For the next level, we have Final Egg from Sonic Adventure. This is the final level of the first Sonic Adventure, and I enjoy it quite a bit. In fact, starting now, I feel like this is where the Sonic Adventure levels begin reaching an impressive level of quality on this tier list. Like, it's actually brilliant that a stage at this quality can maintain such a high skill ceiling from beginning to end. This entire level is littered with plenty of opportunities to use momentum and your spin dash to your advantage. The cherry on top to this level is that it feels climactic and it feels like a satisfying final level. Especially when it comes to the soundtrack, because... Daniel, This soundtrack goes hard. The beginning and end track to this level is definitely one of my favorite songs from the Sonic Adventure soundtrack. This level pops off. Okay, for the next level, we have Lost World from Sonic Adventure. You see, this is a divisive pick. Some people like it, some people hate it. Personally, I love it. Solely because this stage hits all of the marks for what makes the level design great in this game. Great use of momentum, exploration, great use of gimmicks. Yeah, it's got everything. The only controversial part of this level is the snake section. Just by mentioning that, I think all of you know what I'm referring to. Halfway through the level, you encounter this snake section where you have to ride a snake to reach the exit of the room that you're currently in. Except the only problem is that the snake runs at like two frames per second. The snake was implemented awfully. But honestly, it's never really been that big of an issue to me because while it is awkward, it's never really gotten me killed and I also like spend Ash jumping to the buttons to raise the water anyway, so I don't really care about the snake. But I still have to knock it a few because you cannot implement something like this into a video game and expect me not to critique it. Next, we have Skyrail from Sonic Adventure 2. This is the final shadow stage on this tier list, and I can tell you that this one is a banger. Skyrail has so much exploration, there's so many hidden goodies around the stage, I actually feel inclined to explore the level more this time around. The only issue that I have is that while the rail grinding is great, it does bug out sometimes when you're trying to switch rails, and when that happens, it sucks. But when it does work, rail grinding is a ton of fun. It's honestly some of the most fun rail grinding in the series. It may not be the most functional, but the rail momentum and the crouch mechanics never really returned after this game, and it's kind of a shame. Overall, great level, let's move on. For the final level in the A tier, we have Final Rush from Sonic Adventure 2. This is one of the most beloved Sonic Adventure 2 levels, and I can definitely see why. This level has so much exploration, and its entire gimmick around rail grinding never really gets stale, and it even has its fair share of creative skips and tricks. This level is genius. The only thing holding it back from S tier, in my opinion, is that the rail grinding, again, can be buggy when trying to switch rails. I really hate doing this because the level is great. It is, it, it would be S tier so easily, but when I can't switch rails, that just sucks. Simply put, it's unfortunate. So yeah, there's about three Sonic Adventure 2 levels that would be an S tier if they ever remade the game. Wishing for a remake seems like a lost cause, but I'm just saying it would slap if handled right. For our first stage in the S tier, we have Windy Valley Beta from Sonic Adventure. Now, it may seem odd that I'm including this level, but I've already included Green Hill Zone from Sonic Adventure 2, and also, this level slaps anyway, so I might as well include it. This stage was never released, so you do have to play it through modding, 
but the ideas this level brought to the game is so good. This is the most open that the level design has ever been in Sonic Adventure. There's so many different pathways, and every section of this level was built with momentum in mind. In fact, it's built with a strange type of momentum in mind, since there's a part of the level where the hills get very steep, implying that Sega intended on going all out with the momentum style level design earlier in development. But they probably couldn't develop the physics to do so. Either way, while this weird section level may be awkward, the highs of this level make up for it because it is so fun spin dashing to other pathways in this level. It accomplishes something that no other Sonic Adventure level could accomplish. This stage may not be as good in its quality as the rest that I'm about to rank, but the ambition here is insane. This feels like the Sonic Adventure level design, but amped up to 11. This is what Sonic Adventure's level design could become if further innovated. The only thing that keeps it from being the best is the weird awkward level design that the level has in specific areas. If there was ever a Sonic Adventure 3, I would hope that the levels are designed just like this with, of course, more pronounced momentum mechanics. If Sonic Adventure 3 was designed like this, it would slap so hard. We, we need a game like this so badly. For our next level, we have Twinkle Park from Sonic Adventure. This is a dang near perfect level. It starts out with a nice kart driving minigame and ends with a traditional Sonic Adventure level. Except what I really like about Twinkle Park is that the level has a lot of verticality to it. And most other Sonic Adventure levels, you're typically using momentum to cross gaps or reach different pathways. Twinkle Park's level design is based around your ability to climb higher and higher through the use of momentum. Kinda like the level design from Sonic CD, but in 3D. I love it. It makes me think about what a 3D Sonic game in the style of Sonic CD would be like. Honestly, it sounds like a top 5 Sonic game to me at least. I know that a lot of you would disagree because... So many of you are Sonic CD haters, but personally, you know, I'm a Sonic CD enjoyer. I'm, I'm based, I'm, I'm cool like that, unlike you guys. Next up, we have City Escape from Sonic Adventure 2. This stage was obviously going to be an S tier. I think everyone saw it coming considering that this is debatably one of the most beloved Sonic levels of all time. Most people probably have this stage as their favorite Sonic Adventure level. And I mean, it, it's very easy to see why. It sets up the game thematically, it's very well designed, and most importantly, introduces you to who Sonic is and what he is all about. I mean, this level is a masterpiece, and I think it deserves all the love it's been getting. And do I really need to say more than that? I mean, it's City Escape, we've all played it, we all like it. Good level. However, it's not the best Sonic Adventure 2 level in my opinion, because that title would have to go to Metal Harbor. This is the final Sonic Adventure 2 level on this list, and some of you may be confused as to why I chose this level as the best Sonic Adventure 2 level. But please, allow me to explain. The entire philosophy around the levels in Sonic Adventure 2 is that it's easy to beat, but challenging to master all of the pathways and whatnot. Metal Harbor is a perfect example of this. This level is easy, but what makes it so great is the skill ceiling that this level has. No matter how hard you try, beating this stage will never give you an A rank. If you want that A rank, you gotta play the level very well and reach the top of that rocket at the end of the level. And if you know anything about that rocket, not every player can do it. It's very challenging for new players to get up there in enough time, so it takes experience to actually move fast enough to reach the top. Personally, I just use a spin dash to reach the spring, then I run the rest of the way up. But I've seen people use more creative and more complex ways of getting to the top, and honestly, that's very commendable. Regardless, the growth that you will have as a player when playing Metal Harbor is the perfect blueprint for what a Sonic Adventure 2 level should be. And that's all I really have to say. Absolute masterpiece. Okay, we've reached the top three Sonic Adventure levels. For our next stage, we have Emerald Coast from Sonic Adventure. Perfect intro stage with a perfect skill ceiling. This level is so perfectly built around Sonic's moveset, it is a damn masterpiece. The music, the setting, the visuals, the level design, everything is perfect. I love you, Orca. What more can I say? I have no complaints. How do I critique this level? I don't know, I'm just gonna move on. Next, we have Speed Highway from Sonic Adventure. This is definitely another fan favorite, and I can see why. 
This level is once again a masterpiece. Sega cooked with this one. From all of the different pathways of spin dashing up buildings, running down buildings, and a great setting change near the end of the level. Oh my, oh, it's so peak. It is a masterpiece. I, I can't stop saying masterpiece. It is a masterpiece. I don't have anything to add in. I I'm running out of things to say about all three of these levels because they're all about the same almost in quality. For our final level sitting at the top of the S tier as the best Sonic Adventure level, we have Red Mountain from Sonic Adventure. I've made entire videos on this level. I've talked about this level countless times. If you're a regular viewer of my channel, you know I love this level. It's exactly what I look for from a Sonic level. It's got everything from the music, the visuals, the pathways, momentum, everything, everything is perfect down to the last minute details. Absolutely perfect level. It is my baby and I will love it forever. And this is why Sonic Adventure is goaded. All right, it is, is absolutely goaded. Anyways, that's all for the video. So make sure to go in the comments and tell me how right I am or how wrong I am. I'd like to see what you guys have to say. Also, if you are another content creator or you're a small creator trying to get some new content, feel free to take this idea. In fact, I will leave a link to this tier list down below so you can actually do the tier list yourself. I do not care if any other content creators pick up this idea. I wanna see what you guys think about the Sonic Adventure level. So feel free to take this idea, free idea. I'm handing it out. Also, feel free to tweet me your own tier list of these levels. I will be retweeting them throughout the day, and I'm, I'm just curious to see what you guys have for me. With that said, make sure to like, comment, favorite, and subscribe with the bell. $5 channel members get access to my videos two days early, and that's all I have to say for today. I hope you guys enjoyed. I love you guys. Peace out. My channel members are GamerBlake90, Snix, DoeCream, SonicMan715, SonicPip3, Monic, JNXV, ArcherXYZ, SnackPigeon, Bananas, Junion Ring, Sonic Hub, Chip Chap Chop, The Squeaker Nerd, Super Shacks Boom, Sonic Extreme, and Super Saiyan Sonic. Thank you all for supporting my channel. Make sure to click one of the end card screen videos right here. Love you guys. Peace out.